Okay, so in the last video, we have talked about what are classes and object, right? And we have seen the theory of it. In this video, let's try to create a class and we'll also create an object of it. Now, first of all, where do we get a class and what class I want to create? As I mentioned before, in Java, what you want to do, you have to do that inside a class. So in that class, you'll be having methods, you'll be having variables. How do we do that? That we'll see in some time. But the first question is where we have to get a class. Now the class can be created in the same file. So example, in demo.java, we already have our class, right? We have a demo class. And here with this class, I can create another class here and we can surely do that. So what I can do is I can create a class here and I will name this class as calculator. Now basically imagine uh, what I want to do here is I just want to add two numbers. So even if you want to add two numbers, we'll do that with the help of a class. Now what if you don't use a class and normally how you do it? So let's try that first. Uh, I want to just add two numbers and I will remove this extra comments from here. Now, how do we add two numbers? It's very simple. You use uh, variables. Let's say int uh, num1, comma num2. So we got two variables here and then we have to give them some value as well. So I can just come back here. I can give them values. I can say num1 is equal to four and num2 is equal to five. Simple numbers, right? In fact, you know what works well is to have this in two different lines. Again, coding standards. If you have variables on different lines, it is much, much easier to read and much easier to maintain the code as well. Now, once you have these two variables, if I want to add these two, and of course, when you add these two numbers, you will get the output, you will get the result. So maybe you have to, you want to save the results, results somewhere. So I will say int result equal to num1 plus num2. So you can see we got these two values and then we are adding them. Okay, so in result, we got the value. And of course, you can print this value. So you can simply come back here and you can say result, print result. That perfectly works. Now, the twist here is I don't want to add these two values here. Of course, this code will work. I just want to see if this works before we do something. I will say compile and run. So you can see we got nine. But I don't want to add these two values here. So how do we represent that in a separate class? Uh, it's something like, let's say, if you want to call someone, you do, you will not manufacture a phone by yourself. You will just buy the phone. Now, this phone company, they will design the phone. They will make the phone. Example, if you talk about iPhone, let's say, you know, nowadays they don't mention that on the back of the phone. But initial days, they used to say, uh, okay, let, let's talk about some other phone first. You know, most of the phones, doesn't matter how costly it is. Uh, so they, it is mentioned, it is where it is made. Uh, in the previous, the previous uh, manufacturing hub was China. So most of the phone was having made in China, right? Uh, but then if you think about Apple, they are smart in this case. They say designed in California and assembled in China. So even they believe designing is more important than assembling. And that's what you have to do here. Because manufacturing of your object, which you do here, will be done by JVM. What we are concerned about is designing of it. So when you design it, you can just put come back here and you can say class and I will just name it as a calculator. I can just open the curly brackets and close. So this is basically where you will design your stuff. You will put your things. Example, if you talk about calculator and if I mentioned that before, every object will have two things, properties and methods. You will do that in this particular calculator. Now what I want to do is I want to add these two values, right? So if you want to add, that's a behavior, right? That's an action. Action will be done with the help of methods. So here I will say public. So how do we get a method? So we have to specify the access to it, which is public. I want this to be called from anywhere else. And I want this to return me a value. So once that is called, it will perform some operation and it will give back the value. So I will say int, that's the return type. So whatever it returns, we have to specify the return type of it. As I mentioned before, Java is a statically typed language, which means you have to specify for all the data, what type of data you're working with. When you create a variable, you have to mention what type of variable you want to create. When you return, you have to mention what type of data you're going to return. So that's int. And what could be my method name? So a method will also have a name. So here I will say the method name is add. And this add will perform an operation. Now at this point, you can see I'm not passing any value. I'm just saying add. And when it calls, I just want to print in add. I just want to see if this get really get called. Okay, so at this point, I'm, I don't want to add. I just want to see if this is getting called. And also, we are returning a value, right? And that's what the others it says. It says the method must return a result of type int. Okay, 
so I have to return something. So irrespective of what type of calculation I'm doing, I have to return something. So I return, so that's how you return the value. You have to use a return keyword, and then you will give uh, any value, doesn't matter, any integer value. So I'm, at this point, I'm giving zero because we are not concerned about this value. But the question is, how do I call this add? Okay, so this is basically a class. A class will have methods. A class can also have variables. What if you want to get variables here? It's very easy. Just outside the method and inside the class, you can just mention the variables. At this point, I just want to get a variable A just to show you that how do we get a variable. We are not going to use this A anymore, but let's let's keep it there. So in a class, this is how you design your class. You, do, you put two things there. You put your variable and you put the method. The variable name is A, the method name is add. Makes sense, right? And here we are just adding these two values, putting that into result, but we are not going to use this anyway. So we'll sub comment this part and comment. So the ultimate aim now is how do we call that add method? That's tricky. So in order to call the add method, can we directly do that? Can we just directly call a method like this? So that's a method, right? Now, if you're coming from some other languages, it might be supported where you can simply mention the method name and it will work. At this point, you can see it is not working. We are, we are getting the error itself. In fact, there are two type of way you can check the errors. You can directly see in the IDE if you're using it. Otherwise, you can just compile the code to see the exact error. It says cannot find symbol. Okay, that's weird. The add method is there, right? But it still says cannot find symbol. You know why? Because if you can see in the error itself, it mentions that the symbol add, which is a method, is not, is, it cannot find that method in the location demo. Oh, okay. So when you call add, it's not able to find that in the same class. But it's not in the same class, right? In a different class. How do I mention that? Hey, you know, this add is, it belongs to a different class. For that, basically what it says is, the design is not enough. Basically what you need is also the object. Example, let's say if someone comes in the world by saying, hey, you know, we have this amazing idea and we want you to buy this idea. No one will buy the ideas, right? We buy the devices. No one will give you a, a I mean, you will not buy a phone or an idea which, using which you can call someone. It says, you know, this device can call, but then you don't have a device to call. Uh, so basically we need an object, a physical object. In the world of programming, we need a virtual object. So for this class, which is a design, I want the object, the instance, which I can use. How do I do that? How do I create the instance? Now for that, you have to come back here and you have to say, hey, you know, I have a calculator class and I want to create an object of it. So basically imagine calculator as a type. Example, if you want to create a variable like num1, you specify a type, right, which is int. So here as well, imagine calculator as a type and then you are creating an ob a reference of it, let's say calc. Now imagine calc as a variable. This num1, num2, they are also variable. The calc is also variable. The difference between these two is, this num1 and num2, they are called primitive values or primitive variables. It's because int and all those type, uh, float, double, they are primitive. This calc is of type calculator. So we, we normally call them as a reference variable. So that's done. Uh, let's say we have this calc, calculator calc, and then using this calc, I can say calc.add, but still it will not work. The reason, we are just creating a reference. We are not creating an object yet. Okay, how do we create an object? Now, first of all, who creates an object? And every time you get an object in this world, you know, we are talking about carbon neutral. We are talking about how can we reduce the e-waste. In the same way, uh, every time you buy a new phone, basically you are creating an e-waste because when, when you buy a phone, the companies are manufacturing new phones. Okay, so basically you are increasing the e-waste. In the same way, in JVM as well, every time you get the object, it will consume some space. Okay, how do we do that first? How do we create an object? How do we consume that space? Now for that, you have, when you want to consume the space, you will simply say, hey, you know, I want to create a new device. So you have to say new. But uh, what type of device it will ask you? In that case, you have to mention, I want to create a object of type calculator. And you have to also give the round brackets. Now this is how you create the object, okay? This is how you create an object. Of course, we'll talk more about this. Uh, how do we, I mean, what's the difference between this line and this part? But at this point, just to keep it simple, this is how 
you create the object. First, you mention the class name, then you mention the reference variable name, a variable name using which you can access the methods of calculator. And then you say new keyword, that's how you consume this space. But how much space you need, what, what are the variables you have to initialize, that can be done with the help of this thing. Now, it has a special method in Java called constructor. But what is constructor? We'll talk about that later. How it is different from methods, we'll discuss that in detail later. But at this point, with this line, we got the object. And once you got the object, you can simply call the add method. Your job is done. But will it really work? Let's try. So what I can do is I can just clear this and I can go back here, compile and run. You can see we got in add. Basically, you were able to call in add. That's great. Okay, but if you can see this add method actually returns a value. So don't you think we should accept the value as well? If someone gives you something, you have to accept it as well. So here I can say int result. So whatever it returns, I will put that into this result variable and I will just print it. And let's see what happens. So compile, run, oh, it works. You can see it says in add and we are also printing the value of result, which is zero. Why zero? It's because we are returning zero. But what if you return something else? Maybe I want to return based on the values which I have here. Oh, that means here, I don't want to print something. What I want to do is, I want to create a variable called as let's say r is equal to, I want to add num1 plus num2, and then whatever addition I'm getting, I will just return the value. Now, it will make much more sense, right? Instead of returning zero, I should, I, I should be able to return the value. So num1 plus num2 should be assigned to r, and I want to return the R. But the only problem is, I mean, let me just compile this code to see what happens. Compile, oh, we got errors. And you know, I love errors because errors will teach you a lot of things. It says num1 and num2 cannot find uh, which location in calculator. And we have to mention, hey, you know, I was actually talking about num1, num2, which belongs to demo. In fact, the main method. So what you can actually do is, uh, can we, when you're calling add, can we just pass these two values? something like this, four and five, right? And then since you are passing those values, example, let's say if I ask you, hey, you know, add two numbers. The obvious question from your side would be, what numbers? Give me the values first, right? So I will say, okay, add 15 plus 20. Then you will say, okay, that's 35. So that means I have to pass a value. So when I call you to add values, I have to, I have to give you the values. And then of course you have to accept those values. It's not like I'm giving you the values and you're not listening to me. So I have to accept those values. I will say n1 comma n2, different variable names. I have to give int. And then here, instead of adding num1 and num2, I will add num n1 and n2. The variable name can be num1 and num2 as well. Just to, dis just to differentiate between these two, I'm just giving different, different variable names. So the idea here is whatever value you're passing, four and five, will be assigned to this n1 and n2, and that's how you can pass the value. Makes sense, right? And anything else? Let's try this, let's see if this works. I will just clear this and compile. Okay, I've done compilation two times, my bad. So you can see we got nine, so it is working. Basically, whatever value you're passing, it is getting passed here. But there's one more thing. When you have those values in a variable, why you have to mention numbers here? We are hard coding values, not a good idea. So what you can do is instead of writing four here, we can write num1, and instead of writing five here, I can write num2. Simple stuff. So whatever value you have here, you are passing it here, and then that gets assigned to num1 and n2, and then you're adding the value. Let's try, compile, run, it works. So what we have done is we have created the class. How to get a class? It's very simple. You say class and you mention the class name, which is calculator. And then in that class, you can create variables. You can create methods. This is how you specify what object knows, right? Variables, data, and what object does. An object can add two values. Now, how do we use this class? Basically, you have to create an object of it. So as you can see, this is how you create the object. You say, hey, you know, uh, JVM, I want a new object. You, see, you, you use a new keyword there. And then JVM says, okay, I will give you the object, but also tell me design. 
And this is how you mention the design. You say calculator. Now this will give you a new object of what type calculator. So you're assigning that to a variable called calc of type calculator. Example, when you say five, that's an integer type. That's why you say int num2. This is an object of calculator type. So you will assign that to calc, which is a calculator type variable. Now, once you got the object reference here, you can just use that reference and you can call the add method by passing two values, return the value and print. Simple stuff, that's what we have done in this video. In the next video, let's try to expand this more.